Denver, did you do this? Look at me. Come here. Let me see. Let me see your face. Oh my goodness, Denver, you didn't. <laughs> Who could forget Denver the guilty dog? The Queen Anne's County dog gained global attention for fessing up to getting into the cat treats. <laughs> now looking at that, it is hard to imagine that your dogs don't have true feelings much like humans or understand what it is that we're saying. I know that my dogs understand me when I say, hey, you want to go with? Tail goes up, ears go up, and it's every dog for himself. <laughs> Jimmy, I know exactly what you're talking about. We have to spell the word ball when Jagger <laughs> is around. And, you know, now I'm beginning to wonder if when we do spell it, he knows if what he we're spell spelling. Too. Yeah. Well, new research is close to proving that dogs may be more like us humans and even smarter than we think. It's called the Dog Project. Here is a typical dog. Come on. No, no. Come to mama. Here is a typical dog go. owner. You're so smart. Mwah. Talking to her go furry ahead. friend as if it was her human friend. Come on, bring me the ball. But do dogs really understand what we say to them? Sit. Do they know when we're upset, scary, or happy, as many of us believe? His brain's almost humanoid. Dr. Greg Burns says they do. And his one-of-a-kind dog project looks to prove it. The more I study dogs and the more I study their brains, the more similarities I see to human brains. They're intelligent, they're emotional, and they've been ignored in terms of research and understanding how they think. And so we're all interested in trying to develop ways to understand how their minds work. Burns does that in a humane, painless, not evasive way. No needles, straps, or anesthesia. It's a test many of us have had ourselves, an MRI. I'm going to shut the door, though. Okay, we're good. Katie Quill. They've already found dogs respond to reward and smell, noting where in the brain they have positive or negative signals. We've done experiments where we present odors to the dogs. The scent of other people in their house, the scent of other dogs in the house, as well as strange people and strange dogs. What we found in that experiment is that the dogs reward processing centers responds particularly strongly to the scent of their human. And it turns out the visual part of the brain is actually about here. It's actually in the back of the head. So that's where we'll be looking for, for changes. We're trying to understand what dogs perceive about the world. Um, you know, what do they see when they see humans, dogs, other animals, cars, etc. At least in humans, there are parts of the brain specialized for visual processing of all of these things. And so what we're trying to determine is whether dogs have that same kind of specialization. Nobody knows. Sit. Good girl. It all starts here. People and their dogs get evaluated for participation. Basically, a hiring process. Sit. Down. Good girl. They need to be diligent enough to do the homework. They need to have good rapport with their dogs and the right rapport. The dogs must master a series of training sessions. Climbing steps, walking down narrow pathways, entering and remaining in an enclosure, and loud sounds of various pitches. Okay. Then they can step into an MRI machine where they must sit absolutely still for up to 20 minutes at a time. These are images of her brain streaming in real time now. Burns hopes to identify which dogs are ideal for service, like seeing eye dogs, bomb sniffing dogs, and military dogs. He also plans to study dogs' cognitive decline, hoping to shed light on diseases like Alzheimer's. But the dog project also may benefit everyday pets, like those with anxiety and social problems. Understanding how the dog's brain works can only help that dog be happier and more productive in its role serving them. And Dr. Burns hopes his research can lead to granting dogs rights of personhood to afford them additional protection against exploitation. He goes on to say, if that happens, puppy mills, laboratory dogs, and dog racing would be banned for violating the basic right of self-determination of a person. Okay, I gotta admit, as far as that's concerned, I would be in full agreement. Right. Unfortunately, that may still be several years away. But there is something that is happening today that's giving dogs the benefits of a treatment that's 2,000 years old. 
Now, you may, may remember Wally. We first met Wally in March of 2012. 13-year-old Basset Hound underwent acupuncture treatment for a ruptured disc in his back. He was even paralyzed at one point. After 20 minutes of the treatment, up and jumping around just like a puppy again. But the ancient treatment is not limited to dogs. Other animals are benefiting from acupuncture for everything from boosting their immune system to pain relief. And for big animals, like horses, that could be a big relief. This is Sarge. Sarge is a 15-year-old gelding. Veterinarian Elena Shirley is introducing a summer intern to her patient before his treatment. Dr. Shirley believes in acupuncture as a treatment. It's a tool in the toolkit. It does not, for me, it does not replace all of my education. I keep so, the whole toolbox. Not useful in all cases, but it can replace drugs which might have other unwanted side effects. So let's get to it. Unless you're treating Mr. Ed, how do you know where it hurts? Dr. Shirley begins scanning, searching for the kind of reaction that would indicate trouble. Okay, so we've got some pain right yeah. here. Okay. Oh, As you can oh, see, yeah, ow, ow, ow. Sorry, babe. That's where the needles go. She says show horses and barrel racing horses are subject to injuries just like any other athlete. Traditional painkillers might not be appropriate. There can be relief at the end of a tiny needle. Sometimes she attaches small electrodes to the needle for additional stimulation. Uh, you've heard the saying, cross my heart and hope to die, stick a needle in your eye? Well, just wait. Uh, oh. Well, it's close. Doesn't seem to bother old Sarge one bit, though. Here's the point. No pun intended. Acupuncture has been used successfully on people for centuries, now increasingly on animals, too. Oh boy. Yeah, she's going to kiss it. I am. And just to let you know, by the way, that was not actually in his eye. Now, acupuncture for humans began in China, but veterinarian acupuncture was actually introduced in the United States. Hmm, how about that? It's amazing to me that people think about this and figure it out. Now, a lot of us will certainly go to the ends of the earth to make sure that our four-legged friends are okay and not in pain. And I'll bet if they had the ability to protect us, their humans, they would certainly do the same. If you've never experienced the love, the compassion, the friendship from a cat or dog, there's really nothing like it. So today we're going to introduce you to several cats and dogs on Delmarva that could make the perfect fit into your family. And let's show you a few that are looking for you to open your heart and your home. Our first stop in this week's Pet Connect is at Baywater Animal Rescue in Cambridge. This is Gannicus. He's a seven-year-old neutered American shelter dog that weighs 56 pounds. Gannicus is calm, he's quiet, he's mellow. Also told that he loves to give kisses and cuddle. Now, you could probably tell from this picture, Gannicus had some surgery to correct a malformation of his lip and nose, but we're told he's good to go, ready to live a great life with his forever family. Kylie is also at Baywater Animal Rescue in Dorchester County. She's a 70-pound, two-year-old spayed American shelter dog who, as you can see, loves anything to do with water, the pool, hoses, or water buckets. We've been told that Kylie is a smart girl and enjoys her training sessions. She already knows sit, down, and crawl. Kylie is looking for someone to spend some time with her to teach her a few new commands. All right, while we're at Baywater, how about a few cats? This is Bon Bon. Bon Bon's a 12-week-old domestic short hair, white and dilute calico. Bon Bon's a little bit shy. Loves to curl up to something fuzzy and take a nap. Bon Bon's mom was hit by a car, so she is now looking for her new forever family to love her. And last but not least at Baywater, this is Kidder. She is a four-year-old black and white domestic short-haired cat. Kidder is a little social butterfly. She loves <laughs> cat naps in the sun and playing with cattail toys. All right, let's move on to Talbot Humane in Easton. This is Chantilly. Chantilly is a three-year-old black Labrador retriever mix. Chantilly is an affectionate girl who will sit by your side looking for belly rubs. Now, we've been told Chantilly has excellent leash manners, and she's a smart girl. But when it comes to her toys, she's just not sure what they're all about. Her previous owners gave her up, so she's looking for a new family that will take good care of her and never let her go, and to teach her a thing or two about how a tennis ball works. <laughs> And while we're in Talbot County, let's say hello to Belle. She is a four-year-old black and tan coonhound mix. If coonhound is your breed of choice, you just can't do any better than Belle. 
She has all the best traits. We're told she's gentle, even-tempered, easygoing, lovable, and trusting. Her interest in toys isn't great. She may chase one every now and then, but she isn't very good about bringing them back. She does, however, love treats, and if she finds out you have them, she will follow you anywhere to get one. And here's Gordon. Isn't that a great face? Gordon is a three-month-old domestic short-haired kitten who was found as a stray. Gordon's in foster care at the moment, but he's looking for a new love. Now, if you'd like to know more about any of the animals you just saw on Pet Connect, you can visit WBOC.com. Click on our picture at the top of the page. Mm, still ahead on Delmarva Life, all you photographers and lovers of art, it's an event you do not want to miss. Delmarva Life, Sean Stryker checks in from the Ward Museum of Wildfowl Art to tell us about the upcoming Art in Nature Photo Festival. Find out how you can enter or see beautiful works of art. Plus, their sounds are beautiful to the ear. On the Edge takes the stage in historic Studio D a little bit later on. Delmarva Life, we'll be right back. <laughs>